into our side station though quickly because we've got Fire and Ice, UYU. UYU is on their back foot, ladies and gentlemen. The former kings of Gears of War, they're up 3-1 in this one, map number three. Fire and Ice have to win four rounds before UYU can win two. We're on Icebound, and I believe you can see two Ensigns and a, a sh two Shocks, so it's pretty much being played as standard issue for Icebound. Let's see if UYU, the strategy you've called out a few weeks ago, you are the master with the plan. Go ahead and tell them about it at home. And so UYU, they love to get that triple cap off the initial because you force the team to go ahead and wait at E. So Fire Nice, if they're not aggressive here, they will lose the initial. There you go, they got that triple cap. Here comes the incendiary grenades, the hands of mental. Took too long. Shock grenades have been placed, so now they've been re they've gone ahead and gotten the correct position. Fire Nice is inside that trading post. PR, you're shaking your head, baby. Did Fire Nice waste the shock grenade as well? So all they have left to defend anything is gonna be a couple of incense. On the other hand, uh, UIU, they have shock grenades, they have flash grenades, they have incense grenades, they have everything going for them right now, and the scores. So even though they have all the weapons, they have the luxury as well to wait and see if Fire Nice will make the move. Fire Nice has officially made their move into the E Hill. There's the shock. Downs coming out. Exploits is finally going to clean up one on explosive. They're going to get Solars as well. So a great push by Fire and Ice will win them this E Hill for now. They won't finish off the cap just yet. There we go. Four members in. They're going to get this cap quickly now. They're going to get another down. So they've won that push. They actually get, did it with just one singular utility grenade and they back out now. They know that. UYU has to press into them, and on the opposite side of the map, it may come down to summons having to win a 1v1 and press from home to home in this one, because they are down 3-1. This is the first round of the second half, ladies and gentlemen, so everybody would be at full respawns, and the respawns would be at their longest points. You know, I'm looking at Crystal Eyes, even, even Choche. Choche stepped it up last night against that Elevate squad to secure themselves a victory to play against UYU here today. And they're surprising me. I talked about that strategy from UIU. So far, I don't think they've lost that strategy before, but that initial, it got to go over to Fire Nice because they have the lead. And now I was talking about all the time that UIU has to wait for Fire Nice to make the move. The tables have been turned. Now Fire Nice is in the luxury of being able to wait and be the defensive team for UIU's push because not only does UIU have to push in, they have to decap and capture a hill. And here we go, Explosive in the trading Ooh. post, trying to get one, but Exploits has shut down Solar's and now Explosive jumps out but falls straight into the ice and is taken down. Summons, who has broken out that ice for his team, actually comes back to bite Explosive in the back. Now Raver taking out Mental, so Crystallize exploits. They're moving on the home hill. Summons is just going for some of that Lancer fire. He's going to get burned and cooked alive by the fire part of Fire and Ice. And we go to 3-2 to two now. And UYU has got to be feeling some pressure. They've got to be feeling the absolute intensity of this crowd surrounding them. Mexico City is one of our biggest phasers all year long. And they've got to know that if this crowd gets into it, especially on side station with no white noise, it's just going to get worse. You know how I'm talking. You know what I'm talking about, baby. It's just going to get worse on them because there's no white noise to drown out that crowd out there at mm -mm. Feature. Mm -mm. But, but that's like that's like a double-edged sword there because when you realize it, that crowd noise will affect their same headsets as well. And the crowd is actually standing right beside Fire Nice, so it's going to be a little bit louder on their side. So to me, I usually try and tell them if you want your team to win, you want to be quiet in those crucial moments and cheer after the round. And for those of you at home, ladies and gentlemen, Fire and Ice decided to half the timer on their incendiary grenade, whereas UYU half the timer on their shock grenade. So Solar's Exploits getting their utilities ready, and you see that UYU this time has taken the inside of the trading post. They've gotten the power position. I don't believe they went for that triple cap, so the points are going to be just a hair, a nanosecond in favor of Fire and Ice in this one. They click up just a hair before UIU does, so that could come into play much later into this round. But for now, UIU has the power position. Fire and Ice must answer with a push, much like last round. This is where, like you said, it, that, that one second lead just is so crucial. And Fire and Ice taking note of that strategy and just following suit. You see Mental here. He's going to be sliding back and forth playing that Cyclops position. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get real low here because it's really nice and calm. And we're going to get almost secretive because we're going to be talking this one out. you got to be game planning for this. you got to be waiting for that perfect moment for somebody to maybe make a mistake, somebody to get pounced upon. So it's like we're in the bushes. We're like David Attenborough watching these wild beasts getting ready to attack their prey. 
And there we go, B God getting the second incendiary grenade. So very soon here, the shocks will come into play for UIU. Explosive rotates out of that trading post. Nothing really of note happening yet. That's, that's a great rotation because Explosives has a flash. Solars has the incense. With that angle towards the inside, those incense will have a better opportunity for an angle or something like that because from the outside, from the inside, that flash grenade isn't necessarily going to do too much. That allows Explosive to kind of rotate. You see the X-ray cam. That Cantus is going to be Explosive. And this is where I'm looking at the overhead map and I see that there is an opportunity for both of these teams to try and overextend towards the other team's home hill that is going to be a better opportunity for UIU as you see there's already somebody in mental kind of backtracking he's getting ready for almost anything to come out because that one second lead is for fire and ice and I talked about that overextension here it is coming out for UIU they got the mismatch over towards the home hill they're forcing fire and ice to rotate but this is an opportunity here for fire and ice to make a play as they are the defensive team instance coming out flash is coming out as well Raver getting an extra set but his teammate and B God's going to go down but he's going to go ahead and burn up summons explode it's gonna fall. UIU seemed to be melting before our eyes. UIU was melting in that hill, but they've also taken control of the E hill. That incendiary grenade knocked him off of that ledge. Praise has to back up. Praise is gonna have to play some defense. Choche flies over that cover. He's gonna push his advantage now. Praise having to back up, play for his life. Big shot there on Choche. Double down, but it will be nobody there for UIU to get the save. Fire and Ice gets the revive. They get the kill to clean up, and Fire and Ice have two hills to one in their favor, and UIU has has decided to fly. They've gone back to the home hill of Fire and Ice to try to make a flank happen, to try to get two hills in their favor. Explosive, second down and cleaned up. And it looks like UYU just won't be able to break into this building. UYU was being shut out and shut down. The defense is just not there for UYU and Exploit gets a kill of his own. So now Fire and Ice, they've got complete control. They're down to 10 seconds. UYU has to make a miracle happen or we will see a three to three and we will see a possible victory for Fire and Ice. Three to three, baby. Map three, championship Sunday. Could you ask for any better? Because I know I sure as hell couldn't. Man, the crowd is giving Fire and Ice their vamos. <laughs> they're vamos. I just see Twitch chat. Take my vamos. I don't actually see it, but I can only imagine that's what they're saying right now because Fire and Ice are about to do something big here if they manage to take out UYU. This is basically a best of three rounds coming up. So both teams are tied three to three. We talked about the different strategies, both Fire and Ice and UYU know that strategy of triple cap in the home mill. So holding off E for the time being. So I'm looking at who is going to be the first one to switch up that strategy strategy a little bit. The block over for the Incense and then the block for the Shock. So Incense will not be in the hands of UIU and a Shock will not be in the hands of Fire and Ice. They both, uh, they both blocked the, the two minute respawn of the Utility Grenade. They both still have the minute respawn. UIU will still have their Shock every minute and Fire and Ice will have, still have their Incendiary every minute. So. I think that's going to become a big factor, though, because one of those grenades is a bit closer. They get the cap early. Pray Solars goes down. Explosive is right there for the revive. Choche gets it down on Solars, who is picked up swiftly. So you see UIU with the advantage. Now Fire and Ice, ha Fire and Ice has to push in. They have to get a break here because these round, this round means quite a lot. Going up four to three, all the pressure mounts on the other team. All you got to do is just close out at that point. ABC, always be closing, baby, at home. You got to remember that. You see Mental in that trading post. He's going to back out now because the only place he would have been able to run is that open area, and he would have probably frozen to death. Explosive trying to put in some big L triggers. They get the decap, but it's not going to help them because now they're down by 30 points. They've got to get a cap somewhere else on the map. And they don't have any utility to make any of these pushes happen. So that's where we're going to have a wolf pack scenario coming out from Fire Knights, either that or they're going to have to wait and waste a lot of time here into the mid game to see a shot grenade being picked up by Praise, Incense by B God. I talked about Incense will not be in the hands of UIU, a shot grenade will not be in the hands of Fire and Ice unless they go and take the opposition side of the map and that weapon control. B God's going to have to get a kill with this, I think. I don't think you're going to be able to just use wow. it. There's the shot out. A, that's They've a good bait, up. though. That's a good bait, Colin. It's because great bait. now they don't have a shock, so this next move being made by Fire and Ice, they have the instant, so UIU is going to have to make a first aggressive play and surprise you, Fire Knights, nice, or Fire Knights nice will have an opportunity here to regain control of the lead on E after some time, of course. Hey, look, if you want to go championship fishing, you got to have some great bait. Fire Knights nice right there with a great throw out. You see Explosive, he goes into the hill. There's a couple of downs coming out there. Are they going to be able to clean anybody up? They're going to get one. 
and they're going to roll away. So Fire and Ice still with the advantage because they have the positioning here and they have the Wolf Pack going. And you saw that Solar's downed Praised and Praised was cleaned up by Exploit. So a big miscommunication. And that lead that UIU was so happy to have earlier will quickly dissipate if they cannot get into this hill and get this decap. Solar's goes down. There goes B God into the hill to help get those kills solidified. Raver getting the incendiary on the opposite side of the map to possibly bring it back. And they're going to get this recap going. They know they need the recap as well, but UIU is doing a good job of holding off. Choche's towards the back line. He's trying to get the decap on the home hill. Explosive, he's going to get taken out by Crystallize and Raver. Nice teamwork. And the cap is again on E in favor of Fire and Ice. They're slowly trying to get back into this one. Choche behind enemy lines, trying to waste as much time as he can. He needs to try and get out of this spot before he gets taken out. So now the mismatch is in favor of UIU. It's all about what they want to do with it. And if you see the overhead map, multiple members of UIU are trying to overextend. That spreads the numbers out for Fire and Ice. This is an opportunity for UIU to strike. And look at this. They're not slowing down. Praise coming in on a possible flank, trying to shoot over that cover. You see Summons moving in. The king of 1v1s from Gears of four, Gears 4. He's going to have to try to get this win, and the domination's coming through. UIU's threatening it. You see Summons. He's going to get... No, nobody! They get a triple kill, but the hills are in favor of UIU. UIU with a 2-1 to one hill advantage. 230 to 230, 226. And you see Fire and Ice has to fly now. Four seconds left. They've got to get the e hills. They gotta get to the E Hill. They get the E Hill decap going, and it's fire and ice. They're trying to steal this round away. UIU, they're trying to cap the hill. If they get this half, they will get it. And it's on the break by B God. Fire and ice. Fire and ice is one round away from sending UIU home. They are one round away from dethroning what looked to be one of the most dominant teams in the world. Last night, they knock off the number one team from the EU to knock off the number two team from the NA region. Wow. Choche has been waiting for this moment all his life. The king returns. My goodness gracious, like Aragorn in the return of the king. He's, re, he's remolded his seal door. He's got the weapon to do it with, and now he just has to finish off Sauron and his Mordor's minions. And you look to do it here. Fire and ice up four to three. Map three. Can they close it out? Fire and ice have the second lead, I believe. No. But that, that's dead click, even. Click, click, tick. Tick. I don't know I, about I, ever I, seeing I almost, this. I almost want to see who, I wish we can see it go down to the time and see who wins in this scenario right now. <laughs> I just don't, I don't want anybody to get E. I wonder if this Nobody disrupts gets any of these strategies coming out from either one of these teams, because typically you get that second lead and you wait for the other team to make a mistake. But right now, that isn't going to be the case. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure even though it looks dead even on our screen, mathematically in the computer, somebody has to be in the lead. I do, I, I'm, I'm, my gut wants to say fire and ice. You're too smart for me. If you're starting to worry about computers, you're too smart for me. I just want it to be dead even. I want to see this go to the wire. I want to see it come down to that moment where I'm pretty much going to have a heart attack. I need that. I need to go ahead and just go ahead and just close it out right here, ladies and gentlemen. Mexico City Major, the greatest open that you could ever ask for for Gears of War. We're here Gears 5 Sunday, Championship Sunday. We have a 52 to 52, four to three, round number eight. UIU having to win every round from here on out because their tournament life is on the line. Shock out. Oh, it's a big there's, the, there's the incident on Choche, but there's the headshot from Crystallize. There's the incident who picks up Explosive. Now you've left him in the trading post by himself. Can Crystallize make it happen? He will get it to go. Solar's falls. They will decap and recap the E Hill. So fire and ice with the advantage in round eight, with the possibility to send UIU home. Can they close it out? One minute, 10 seconds. This is insane right now. No one at home would have predicted this scenario for Fire and Ice, and they are running away with it. Confidence and their heads held high, led by the King himself and Choche. The Shaka Nate's gonna come out. Exploits are to pick up a kill. Mental is doing what he can, but Exploits with a second one. They need to shut down Exploits. They can't let him go wild. The man advantage is gonna go over to Fire and Ice. They're going ahead and ready for that to do. Vigon taking out his two but Exploits! Exploits gets another one. They have a mismatch on Mental towards this. Middle Hill, this is a big fight for Fire Knives. Mental needs to stay alive. He will fall next. They're trying to get a decap on the Central Hill. Fire Knives are taking over.
Fire and Ice are so close. They can taste it. They're so close. It is the hair on their chinny chin chin. We're splitting them, baby. They've got Explosive down to one respawn. Choche himself onto one respawn. But in 20 seconds, it's all over. But the crying for UIU down to 15. You got to fly. UIU, first member down. The shot grenades out. They will solidify the victory, I believe. We are down to the last five seconds. And UIU looks to be taking the beating of a life. Oh,